Okay. Thank you very much. So, um, so hello again. So, um, so we um, uh, we said that we would uh, just study now the, the case of a single quantum dot and a double quantum dot. So, uh, so let's do it uh, now. And um, I'm I just maybe uh, remind uh, where we stopped. I mean, last. Uh, uh, so uh, what we had as a general uh, transform, I mean, uh, uh, Hamiltonian. So after doing uh, uh, this, uh, so we, the, um, the, the small transformation which we did before, so to remove uh, the, the vector potential for the, from the kinetic part. Uh, so we had something like that, plus the Coulomb, plus the cavity. Uh, plus, um, so now this, uh, the photonic pseudo potential. And then, in fact, I forgot, I mean, I realized that I forgot to put a, a, an important term here, which is an interaction term, okay, which uh, is generated by this transformation between the an interaction term between the electrons. And, uh, but uh, for what I'm going to talk about, in fact, it's, uh, it can be neglected, but it, it's just for completeness. So there is this interaction term, and now uh, what we are going to see is what are uh, what is the how what happens essentially when uh, we couple a, a single quantum dot, so a single orbital, um, to this um, um, so let's say I have an orbital epsilon d here. I have a Fermi reservoir with the with the coupling gamma here. I said I have only one, so this is, um, let's say, um, a hard wall. I mean, uh, just to make things uh, simpler, and um, and essentially, um, uh, and essentially, that's it. So now this guy is going to be embedded into a, a cavity. And, uh, and in fact, we derived the coupling, uh, the, the coupling term uh, in the previous lecture. So the, in fact, uh, uh, n hat, uh, so or v, curly v hat, uh, has a simple form of uh, g. So this is the coupling in, uh, term times uh, uh, d dagger d here. Uh, and which means that now, if I write down a, a simple form of, this, uh, of the Hamiltonian, so I say that here I have a lead, here I have this, this hopping, which is characterized by the, um, in fact, by uh, uh, um, the matrix elements T, uh, which depend on K. Uh, in fact, uh, I can write down a, 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 a simplified Hamiltonian for this guy. And, um, and uh, essentially, it's epsilon D times uh, so, uh, D dagger D plus um, uh, the, re the left reservoir. Sum over k, so epsilon k. I, I, so the spin is not important here, so I, I omit the spin here. Plus um, uh, sum over um, tk of um, d dagger uh, ck here um, left plus the Hermitian conjugated. So that's the that's the dot part. Plus now we have uh, uh, G, so uh, D dagger D, A plus A dagger, plus uh, H bar omega naught, plus the Beth. Okay, there is, uh, uh, this is one thing. And then in fact, I have to keep in mind that I will drive the system. So the, the usual way of uh, adding a drive in, uh, in, in this Hamilton, a driving term is, uh, so I said I will drive the system at, um, well, so let me just see what the convention is. Okay. So I, I said I have an additional drive term at the frequency, uh, at the drive frequency, which, is, which I call omega RF uh, plus, uh, so the Hermitian conjugated. 
Okay, and this is going to be the drive term because, uh, of course, uh, what, I what I will do uh, um, is uh, on the experiments is to, in fact, uh, 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 inject uh, inject uh, um, a mode uh, in a cavity, which will is going to be reflected uh, and transmitted. And what we measure experimentally is, for example, is the ratio between the, the amplitude at, in the output and the amplitude at, in the input. Okay, uh, or we can also measure what is reflected. Okay, so that's uh, that's uh, that's the program. And so now, if I want to understand, uh, so um, uh, uh, what is uh, uh, going on? I mean, I need to write uh, the equation of motion of the photonic field. So of course, I'm, so I'm, there, there are many ways to do that. Uh, I, I take the what I find to be the simplest way. So it's just to um, to um, to do. I mean, uh, to uh, again, I mean, to to show that. Uh, uh, that we can understand um, the, um, the underlying physics uh, um, with very basic phenomena, which uh, will essentially can after uh, we can after essentially um, uh, develop all these things uh, in more complex uh, uh, systems. Uh, so here you you notice, for example, that I have no Coulomb interaction in in the dot. So I take a non-interacting single dot coupled to reservoirs. Uh, this is the first example, but this uh, is uh, will allow me to introduce the fact that. Uh, we will be sensitive to the compressibility of this data. But of course, now I could put a Coulomb interaction if I have, yes? It can be anything. It can be pulses, it can be continuous wave, it can be anything. Yeah, well, here, so, well, but then you, you will know here essentially, since now you, you, you have a, uh, it, this is going to be here in this epsilon in, okay, which you will have to, to, to shape it, and then from the Fourier transform of your uh, transmission, uh, essentially you will be able to reconstruct, I mean, what will be the shape of the uh, input and output signal, uh, of the reflected and then transmitted signal. Yes, exactly, yes, in will be, become time dependent. Now, I, now essentially, I, I just take one Fourier component, let's say, uh, doing this, I will have one Fourier component of the response of the system which will be at omega RF. Then it's time dependent, or you just do a sum, I mean, a continuous sum or an integral over some window of frequencies, and then uh, you can uh, reconstruct like that uh, uh, the shape of the outflowing, uh, and, or the, of the output, or uh, the reflected or transmitted signals. Ah, uh, the physical meaning of that is that um, uh, there is, a, you see, the, um, um, uh, the, uh, the charges which interact with, um, uh, with the electromagnetic field um, uh, have now, can, uh, can uh, have a mutual uh, uh, interaction through uh, essentially virtual excitations of, uh, of, um, uh, of uh, photons in the, in, the, in the mode. So it's a bit like, I would say, um, the Van der Waals uh, forces, you see. So it's, uh, it's a, but it's any kind of coupling. So, for example, this uh, this coupling term here resembles also, uh, although it's, it has it doesn't uh, have exactly the same structure to the um, um, to the um, uh, flip flop interaction which you have which you have between two uh, uh, qubits, uh, uh, which are um, essentially uh, related to the virtual exchange of uh, of excitations. The, the, the difference between uh, this and and, and the, the term I'm talking about. Uh, uh, which is the virtual exchange of of, uh, of excitation is that here you see it's completely non-resonant, so there is no, you know, characteristic frequency of the mode appearing. Uh, whereas if you take the the usual, I mean, uh, um, the usual um, uh, second-order process, uh, uh, there is the detuning between the the qubit energy and the cavity, which tip, which uh, matters, uh, and therefore. Uh, 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 it's, it, it's slightly different, but the spirit is a bit the same. So this is an interaction which comes naturally if you transform. Uh, now you the, the this Hamiltonian in the, uh, to, to get uh, this kind of linear term here, uh, which which shows up like this. Now for single quantum dot, I mean it's well, I mean uh, in, in principle there can be an interaction between the, the dot here and, and the leads. Uh, 
but you see you need they need to be in the same place right uh, or they, they need to, to to share since the mode i mean is is spread over the whole i mean uh, system it's much much larger than the size of the system in principle there is interaction if you, if you plug in numbers if you're not essentially in the uh, in the in the ultra strong coupling regime so if, if the g here uh, is is much smaller than omega naught then it's uh, it's a very small effect as compared to the to the static coulomb energy which is uh, so this is, let's say, in a, would be at most in the microvolt range, whereas this is in a millivolt range. So you see there are three orders of magnitude of it. But in principle, this term is there, and maybe there are some possibilities to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to magnify it. OK? OK, so yes, yeah, so, okay, so let's write down, and let's continue and write down this uh, um, the equation of motion. So essentially, now I. I will do the commutator with the, the Hamiltonian. And this, uh, so now I'm, uh, and so there will be, uh, so there will be the, um, uh, the, the, like the, the usual unperturbed, I mean, uh, um, evolution of the, of the field. But there will be another term here, which uh, comes from the commutator, which is just a, a D dagger D. And then I have to add, uh, uh, so the, um, the dissipation now. So I assume that I have done the job. I mean, uh, uh, it's, it's a very conventional, I mean, way of dealing with uh, So here there is a bath, and so I assume that I can treat the, the, the dissipation properly. Uh, and so this, this comes into this term here. And then uh, finally, there, is, there will be the drive term, which will show up here. OK. And so uh, essentially now, um, um, now I have uh, more, so uh, more or less everything I need. And I will use essentially uh, um, two uh, limiting cases, which, which are rather, which are relevant experimentally. So first, uh, I will take the, the, the semi-classical uh, limit. Uh, so which is that essentially I replace uh, alpha, alpha a by a scalar or by its expectation value, uh, making the, the right decoupling. And this is, this is going to be valid for an average photon number in the cavity of uh, essentially larger than, OK, let's say, just to be conservative, 100. And, uh, uh, and so this is the first thing. And the second thing, I assume that I have a linear response uh, between this guy and the photonic field, because you see that now this uh, if I now look at what does this Hamilton, the, the, the coupling Hamiltonian, if I am in a, in a semi-classical limit, uh, it will become uh, essentially G D dagger D times uh, alpha plus alpha star. And so this is, is, can be absorbed. It's, it's, it's a shift. Uh, so this can be absorbed. Uh, in epsilon d. So in other words, uh, uh, essentially this, um, uh, this um, uh, guy here, the, the photonic field is shaking the epsilon d. And therefore, um, uh, you can use, a, you can say that this is a, a perturbation um, of the system. And you can write a, a, the a linear response, uh, essentially, of t here. It, it will be something like a, the static uh, uh, value uh, of the um, of the uh, of the of the, the mean occupation of the dot uh, uh, times uh, essentially uh, uh, this guy uh, and the derivative. Uh, so this is a linear response, but you will see that the linear response uh, um, is um, is in fact. Uh, um, I mean, it allows us to, uh, to, um, to cover many, many uh, um, experimental situations. So this, uh, this, I say this is, uh, this is chi, uh, which is, uh, so this is the compressibility of the system, you see, because now this is, this is the, uh, the average number, and this is essentially the chemical potential. We'll say, okay, uh, so this is the end of our DMU, this is the compressibility.
and so so you will see that now in in this guy essentially the compressibility shows up and uh and this is what uh, what this measure that's uh, what you're measuring in fact when you're measuring this uh, uh this kind of response so now i do a, i will do a further rather um standard approximation, so I will do a rotating frame approximation. Because you see that now, if I'm looking at, at what's happening close to the frequency here, um, I have essentially, I will have terms. Uh, uh, this term, for example, will rotate very fast at twice the frequency, uh, whereas this term will be uh, in a rotating frame, more or less stationary. And therefore, there are many terms which simplify, and then you end up, uh, if you write down in a stationary limit, uh, uh, with essentially, um, so while well, okay okay you can okay let's you can write down so you you will have a, so uh, minus uh, alpha um, times uh, minus i omega rf uh, equals so now a, a minus omega naught alpha bar. So now I, I just, uh, so there is now minus i, so g squared uh, chi times, um, and now I take only the first term, times uh, alpha bar. And then uh, there is uh, this guy here. Plus, uh, so I just put it here. Okay, and then uh, uh, then you see that uh, so this um, now so this is in a, in a stationary limit. This so uh, so this is uh, essentially uh, not uh, this is a uh, constant as a function of time, and so you end up uh, with a simple uh, expression, uh, which is that uh, the uh, uh, the amplitude of the um, of the photonic field. Uh, it's just uh, um, it's just uh, this uh, okay and so so this is not fully what I'm measuring uh, in experiments when when we are measuring in experiments so I so in the experiments what we're measuring is for example the transmission through the cavity and for that I use a uh, like the the usual so the prescription where the so the prescription of the of the um, of the input output theory which can be justified is that the the b no sorry the b transmitted is uh, is uh, the so you you assume that you have now okay yeah, yeah that you have so I will put them here. So now you assume that you have some. Uh, now, between these modes here and the mode here, you have a kappa left here. Between these modes here and the mode there, you have kappa right. And then you have some kind of decay term, which is the kappa intrinsic of the, uh, of the photons, OK? And, uh, and in fact, uh, uh, the lambda naught is just the sum. Um, this is, so I'll take the same color. It's just the sum of all these, uh, these four uh, dissipation rates. Uh, you have the internal dissipation rate and the rates uh, which are uh, connecting the cavity to the uh, to the lambda to the uh, to the outside world, and this is uh, of course uh, comes into the dissipation, uh, something like that, and uh, and so then uh, uh, now I mean um, essentially um, so there is a factor of um, uh, so now this so this is uh, this is for the t. And uh, now uh, for the um, input, uh, uh, for the, sorry, for the epsilon in, it's just the square root of kappa left, um, V in, which is over there. And then in fact, I forgot, okay, just to, to make things, uh, there is a factor of two in this convention here. Okay, and if I do that, uh, now I have the transmission here. Which is the B T D M uh, over B in sorry, 
which will be just the square root of kappa left kappa right uh, divided by uh, omega rf minus omega naught uh, plus i kappa left plus kappa right plus kappa in over 2 minus g squared chi. So here, um, okay, so that's, uh, and essentially, this is the only thing you need to know to understand these experiments with uh, the cavities. It's just that you will need always to replace chi by something which is, uh, will be related to the system which you're looking at. So chi have, can have a more complex, uh, um, um, let's say, uh, forms. So here it has a very simple form. It's a real and it's uh, so independent of the frequency. This is normal because uh, in writing this here, I have assumed, so this is, that I am in the adiabatic limit, so that all the energy scales inside the, uh, the, the, the dot are much faster, so or much larger, adiabatic limit. Are much faster than, uh, than the cavity. So for example, the gamma, here is much larger than uh, omega naught. And, uh, but then, of course, this can have some, uh, also an imaginary part, it can depend on the frequency, and, it's, and as you have seen from uh, Jason's lecture, uh, it can also become something which will uh, um, um, uh, be, have a resonance if you're, if you're now uh, talking to a doublet. Okay, but then, for this case, uh, there are very simple, a very simple thing ha occurs, in fact, is that you see that you recognize here that this is a Lorentzian. So, so in fact, uh, so there are two things which you can uh, which you can calculate. So the transmission is the is uh, B T over B in. Uh, so this is one thing which you measure. So this is just uh, this is just a Lorentzian line shape, which is somewhat what you would what uh, uh, one could have expected from the beginning if you take the single mode uh, coupled to a continuum. Uh, uh, so the kappa left plus kappa right. And then there is the phase also, which is uh, just uh, essentially minus the arctangent uh, of, uh, um, so, uh, okay, now here I just put the plus uh, omega ref minus omega naught uh, minus g squared. Okay, and so what uh, what the um, what the system does to uh, to the cavity? Uh, you see here very clearly what it's doing. It simply shifts the resonance frequency of the cavity. So uh, so you have a coupling strength which is g squared. This is normal because this is a second order process, and essentially because it has a, a charge susceptibility, uh, uh, it shifts. I mean uh, the cavity, uh, uh, um, um, the, the resonance frequency of the cavity. And in fact, it can shift it by many line width if the line width is narrow enough. So, so I, will, I will show what, what is the, the example. So, so I can do it here, for example. So if I represent uh, the transmission T as a function of the, fr of, the, um, of the frequency. So here, by the way, I mix completely frequency, pulsation. I mean, uh, so, um, so uh, of course, it's, uh, it has some degree of importance. But for this kind of lecture, it's not so important. Uh, uh, so it has a Lorentzian line shape centered. Uh, so this is the, chi, the case uh, of, uh, let's say, chi equals zero. Okay, and then depending on the sign, uh, so in our case, the sign will be uh, 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 negative. Uh, so you will have, let's say, imagine, so this is, uh, this is now uh, kappa left plus kappa right plus kappa Intrinsic here, and now uh, and now when the so if you switch on the um, if you switch on the um, I just take the green if you switch on the 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 dot it will simply shift and only shift here because we are in a diabetic limit so this guy is real uh, you will only shift essentially you will the the resonance frequency here. Uh, 
uh, by an amount which is g. So my, so here uh, it will be minus uh, uh, g square chi here. Yeah. So um, so essentially that's that's uh, that's what we'll do. And it's in fact uh, if you're interested. So you see the here. If you're interested in measuring chi, I mean, uh, the simplest way is to, uh, to make a, a very good cavity with a very narrow line width, and you're measuring chi uh, with a very um, uh, high accuracy, as you will see uh, later on. So, um, so, in fact, it's interesting to apply this to such a situation, because uh, in such a situation, in fact, uh, um, you see there is a, the, charge is only, the charges are only able to hop back and forth here. But since there is a second wall here, the, there is no transport. Uh, absolutely, there, is a, there, there cannot be any current flowing through the system. But nevertheless, you will see that. So uh, nevertheless, the, um, um, the, you will have a signal in a cavity. Uh, and why is that? It's because essentially, um, so now I will not uh, do this in detail, but then the, the expectation value, uh, so, um, so now it's, uh, I will calculate chi. In the in the single dot, single contact limit. In a single dot, single contact limit. So um, so so in fact, n now it's so you have a low, again a low, this similar things. In fact, you have a Lorentzian line shape uh, and you have an occupation tilde Fermi energy. So uh, so you can uh, write down uh, um, some like uh, the um, this is the density of states uh, of the dot. That's the density of states of the dot. And then, of course, there is the Fermi Dirac function here because you, you occupy it till the, uh, the Fermi energy. And uh, essentially, um, um, essentially, now you can write down that at t equals zero, um, essentially, so I say it's okay, there is one, yes, I forget that always there is one over pi here. So at t equals zero now, so when this is just a step function, it's a uh, uh, it's um, easier, so chi equals dn over d epsilon d at t equals zero. So it would, it would just be, um, so two, so it will just be a gamma um, uh, over, um, uh, over um, epsilon d squared. So it will be one over pi here plus gamma half with a minus sign. Okay. So I know, yeah. And so you see that now um, this um, uh, this guy is also has also a, is also a Lorentzian, but now it's centered around a. So the width is gamma here, and it's centered for epsilon d equals zero. So that's the simplest case. Okay, that's this is minus chi here, which I uh, which I represent. And you see that now, uh, for example, if I am completely off resonance, uh, uh, the dot essentially the charge is completely uh, fr frozen on on the dot; it cannot move. So um, so epsilon d much bigger than gamma. Uh, there will be no shift. Uh, so chi equals zero essentially. No shift uh, of uh, uh, frequency. And uh, epsilon d equals zero. So now uh, chi is, uh, uh, it will be minus two here over pi, uh, one over gamma. And so which means that then the dot is, uh, so there is a, a shift now of uh, uh, so uh, minus two over pi 
uh, g squared over gamma. So of course, this is a situation where you know, I mean, uh, what you would expect, what you should expect, because uh, this is a non-interacting situation. There are situations, in fact, where the chi is, yes? Absolutely, yes, exactly. And so this experimentally, you do this by, by sweeping the gate voltage of your, uh, of your device. And, and, and you will see, uh, like, uh, like exactly like Jason was showing uh, uh, in his lecture, that at some point you have resonances. Uh, so these are, uh, here it's more a, a resonance in the density of state. In, in the general case where you have a Coulomb interaction, it's a resonance between charged states, but it's exactly the same. The, the charge is allowed to fluctuate, and therefore you can uh, uh, essentially um, uh, have a shift. And you see that now you have only one gamma, which is the so, so it, this is not a conventional setup, but like you, you have a situation where you have absolutely no transport, and uh, you still have a, a finite, uh, um, you, you still have a finite result in the um, uh, in, in the cavity response. Uh, but it's purely from the coupling to the reservoir, so it's purely quantum fluctuations. Okay, and so now, now we can, we can, yeah? Sorry? I take into account, sorry, the? Yeah? No, no, here it's at equal zero. No, no, in fact, the temperature building will be here in the Fermi function. So here, this, this is the density of states. So there is, a, so it's, a, it's a, there is no temperature here. The temperature is only here. Okay. Okay. So let's see now whether I mean we have simple situations uh, which can, which are experiment, which can be understood uh, with uh, this, uh, this reasoning. And then I, so oops. Okay. Before showing this to you, I mean, so. Uh, I, will, uh, I would like to acknowledge the people uh, who have worked with me on this, uh, on this project. Uh, so first of all, these are my students. Uh, so, uh, so here is Laure Brua, Mathieu Desjardins, uh, Mathieu D'Artiai. There is also Tino Cubens and Lauriane Contamin Roland in this picture. There is JVNO here. And on the theory, uh, so in fact, like this is most of the material uh, uh, which I presented here. Uh, this is Audrey Cotter. And also we have worked uh, with Mansu Choi and Minchu Lee. This is going to be for tomorrow's part of the lecture for a numerical renormalization group, uh, and Benoit Dousseau for the general, I mean, uh, uh, for um, like the two of the projects which I'm presenting to you. And so, um, oops, yeah, okay, that's, uh, that's the, uh, okay, so, so now this is what we have done. So essentially, uh, that's what I have just written to you. On the, on the blackboard, and then, uh, uh, in fact, this is what I was telling you, that uh, this is linear, so that's the adiabatic regime, where essentially uh, you have just um, the compressibility of the charge susceptibility which shows up, uh, and uh, this is very important because uh, uh, when you have correlation effects, uh, the compressibility is completely different from the conductance, for example, from the connectivity. Uh, and, so, uh, and so I will show you uh, tomorrow a very specific example where uh, you see that you can learn a lot by doing uh, measurements in, even in the adiabatic regime uh, of the compressibility uh, of, the, of the system when you have strong electronic correlations. Uh, but then, of course, you can have a more uh, generic, uh, uh, let's say, um, a form of the, um, uh, of the sky, st still using linear response theory, uh, but um, at finite frequency. Uh, and at finite frequency, there are two things which happen. First, this guy can pick up uh, an imaginary part, this is normal because you don't have uh, any static, it's not static anymore, it has uh, some uh, retardation effects, for example. And, uh, and so, of course, this uh, complex structure is also related to the fact that you can apply this uh, uh, to um, uh, situations where you have, for example, a super connecting contact, in which here you have some kind of underlying NAMBU, uh, NAMBU um, um, uh, uh, structure. Okay, but then the cavity provides a direct compressibility measurement, uh, and I and I show this to you. Uh, so this uh, this is what I will show you tomorrow. 
Yeah, I show this to you uh, in a very specific example, which is the case uh, of a single uh, um, um, of a single uh, uh, dot here connected to a, a normal contact and uh, and to a hard wall. And my hard wall uh, is in fact uh, not a, a real hard wall. It's it's a superconducting contact. So a superconducting contact has a uh, has a gap uh, at the Fermi energy. And therefore, uh, if I bias this, the, the system properly, uh, essentially there will be uh, no current flowing uh, through the system because there will be a, a, an exponentially, uh, um, um, let's say, uh, an exponential gap, an, an exponentially small gap in this uh, uh, situation, in this uh, contact here, which will allow me exactly to, uh, to study this situation which we have uh, looked together um, um, uh, like on, on, on the blackboard. So, uh, so this, uh, this is essentially uh, uh, the uh, Coulomb diamonds, uh, which um, um, Jason was discussing in his lecture. So this is the bias which we apply to the system, and this is the gate, and the gate allow us to change uh, the uh, epsilon d here, and to put it resonant or not with the, the chemical potential of the lead. So this is at uh, so uh, and so at, at zero bias. This is really an effective n dot junction, and uh, and this is exactly uh, this is exactly what uh, uh, what I was telling you now. So um, you see now I'm I'm doing a zoom here. You see it? on this region, this is the DC current flowing through the device. So you see it's completely white. So this means zero current, the white. So, uh, and this means that there is absolutely no current flowing through the device in this uh, region. This is normal because I have only one contact. And, uh, and you see this in the differential conductance of the system. You have, uh, these are the edges of the Coulomb diamonds here. Uh, so they are shifted here because there is a superconducting contact. But what is important is that up to the noise uh, of our measurements, uh, of our uh, IV uh, converters, uh, essentially, uh, we have uh, uh, no current uh, and no conductance uh, in the system. If you look, look like, for example, in, uh, uh, in what happens in the microwave signal, uh, so this is the amplitude and the phase. Uh, so the amplitude uh, is uh, just the, um, the modulus uh, of its BT over B in, uh, the mo uh, in, the, uh, the, uh, in modulus. Uh, and the phase uh, is just this, uh, uh, the arc tangent uh, is just this arc tangent when the omega RF are, is sitting at omega naught here. And what you see is that uh, in the regions where you didn't have uh, any uh, current, uh, in fact, uh, um, you have uh, here uh, a finite microwave signal, which is exactly what I was telling you here, is that uh, when you bring, essentially, when you cross with the gate, uh, the, um, um, uh, the Fermi, I mean, uh, when you tune the gate to, to make the level uh, be resonant here with the Fermi energy of the of the normal contact. So this is situation two. Uh, you uh, have a, a, a large, I mean, signal in the cavity, whereas you have absolutely nothing in the in the conductance. Okay. And so, um, okay. And so you see that uh, you have also a finite signal in the phase here, and this finite signal in the phase is also as exactly the same thing as what I was I was telling. So. Uh, it's exactly the same thing, but what you see uh, is that, uh, uh, in fact, the, the phase uh, has a peculiar structure. It has a peculiar structure. So, for example, you see the, it's, uh, in blue, this is positive sign of the phase, uh, and in red, uh, it's negative sign. You see that uh, uh, the sign of the phase, especially if I am sitting here, tells you whether the cavity resonance frequency is above or below uh, the, uh, the bare frequency of the cavity when the system is off. And therefore, the sign change of the phase tells you that essentially the, the, um, the cavity uh, resonance frequency uh, in the presence of the dot uh, goes from below to above uh, uh, continuously. And so this cannot be understood with this simple adiabatic picture. Uh, uh, this simple adiabatic picture uh, uh, gives only a, a negative shift, uh, essentially. And, and this kind of sign change is related to the fact that here I have neglected the, the um, um, uh, the um, uh, frequency dependence of the uh, of the of the uh, charge susceptibility, uh, which I don't have the right to, to 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 call compressibility anymore because it's not anymore a thermodynamic quantity. Okay, but you can do even more. 
so you see uh, by applying exactly the similar ideas uh, you will see that now you can see what this guy uh, um, uh, is doing when uh, uh, I drive the system out of equilibrium and so this is what we have so now when I drive the system out of equilibrium uh, I have uh, some kind of um, um, some kind of increase in the conductance so this is normal because I am reaching one of the uh, uh, you see I'm reaching one of the um, uh, of this resonance here, here at high bias. So this is for a constant high bias uh, as a function of the gate. And what you see here is that now the amplitude starts from, a, from the, the bare value, which is, uh, uh, let's say, our, the, the, the transmission, which, are, which is our base uh, uh, reference for the transmission. And it tra the amplitude goes down. So in fact, uh, um, if you think uh, uh, of what can happen, this, this is kind of expected. I mean. Uh, what you would expect is that essentially, uh, when you switch on uh, uh, a system uh, inside the cavity, uh, you can only can have only more dissipation, right? So then the, the amplitude goes down. You get less photons at, at the output uh, than, than at the input. Uh, this is somehow expected. What is completely unexpected is that the amplitude goes up. It goes above, uh, although it's a very it's a small effect. It goes above uh, the the base value. Therefore, you get more photons uh, uh, out. Uh, 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 as compared to before, and uh, and um, and this is this this was kind of a surprise to us. You have a microwave amplification here, uh, in the sense that uh, you have a, a, a positive uh, um, uh, amplitude uh, shift. Okay, and so this is very reminiscent uh, of uh, uh, the work uh, by in the group of Jason, and also to some extent the work by the group of Andreas Valraff, uh, where uh, they saw in double quantum dots. Uh, uh, so much bigger signals. Uh, well, in fact, this is much bigger signal. It's only for the work of uh, of, uh, of Jason. Uh, much bigger signals uh, uh, with some kind of a similar line shape uh, with some down. Uh, uh, I mean, down with a dip and, and, and a peak. Uh, okay. And now the question is whether we can understand with this simple, uh, uh, with this uh, um, the formalism, these uh, these features. We can we can understand quantitatively. And for that. Uh, we need uh, uh, to figure out what the parameters are for our system. So again, we take this, uh, 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 this uh, linear response uh, uh, theory for the cavity uh, line width. Uh, now the chi will start to depend on the frequency, uh, and you have all these parameters. Uh, and you see that, uh, again, uh, this is what I was telling you at the beginning, that the, the gammas here, because this is a very close dot, are in the microwave or sub-microwave range, so you see it. Uh, and, uh, and uh, the coupling strength here, which we extract from this contrast, uh, is pretty large. It's about 100 megahertz. It's exactly what I was telling you. And now, if I look at what the theory uh, with all these parameters uh, uh, um, so, uh, is uh, uh, giving, is, uh, is, a, is a quite uh, good ag agreement. So, uh, so in color scale, it looks nice. Uh, and in fact, it looks also nice uh, when, you when, you, uh, when you do cuts. So if I do cuts here, I can uh, understand uh, with this out of equilibrium, uh, uh, so Green's functions theory, which has been carried out by Audrey Cotter, uh, all the physical parameters uh, at the same time, uh, with the, of course, uh, the same parameters. So you see, this is the conductance here. In, uh, in open circles, this is uh, uh, the um, um, uh, this is uh, the, the, the conductance data, and so you see in lines here, this is um, the um, uh, the, the theory, but this is like uh, like uh, everyone in quantum transport is trying to do to model. I mean, uh, conductance data with uh, 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 with uh, that kind of theoretical uh, um, uh, plots. But what is very, uh, even more interesting is that you see that even though you have complex patterns here for uh, the amplitude and the phase uh, contrast, uh, you can account for them quantitatively uh, in all these cuts, uh, which means that. Uh, what we have done together, and of course, uh, you have to do the, the, the work uh, of uh, calculating uh, what is going on for, uh, for the G less, for, I mean, all, for all the chi, I mean, uh, as a function of frequency. Uh, uh, and this was done by Andre Cote. And in fact, uh, all these features can be understood quantitatively. Uh, and therefore, I mean, uh, um, uh, we have a very good understanding of what is going on. In, per in particular, we have a very good understanding of what is going on, why we have uh, 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 amplification. And, uh, and in fact, uh, now we understand what is going on. If you are sitting here, uh, 
you have transitions between uh, uh, the superconducting peak in the density of states uh, and the dot, uh, uh, which, uh, sorry, which absorb uh, uh, photons. And if you are sitting here, you will have transitions uh, which emit photons, and this is, these are these photons which you uh, uh, see uh, uh, through the, um, uh, the cavity. Okay, so you see that uh, we can really uh, uh, extend uh, to uh, uh, this, uh, um, uh, let's say, this picture and this, uh, this way of reasoning uh, uh, pretty far to understand also out of equilibrium processes uh, and how these out of equilibrium processes uh, of electronic transport uh, show up uh, uh, in, the, um, uh, in the microwave cavity response. Okay, so now I. So, are there questions to, um, to this, uh, on, on this part? Um, So now, uh, for the um, so now we can we'll switch back to the uh, so I will keep this in fact um, uh, we'll keep this. Uh, 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 in, uh, so, I have one question about this. So, yeah. uh, I, I I didn't did you see the shift or uh, uh, the shift that is induced by this sky? Yeah, yeah. Uh, experimentally, you saw the shift, right? Yeah, this is what I was showing in the, the beginning. Yeah, right. But the 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 thing is that I mean, technically, uh, there is also a back action, right, which is missed here in the sense that uh, n can, in principle, depend on 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 g also, right? Uh, I mean, that is technically. Uh, yeah, uh, but this is already embedded here. You see, yeah. So uh, the n here, there is a. You see, the, um, essentially, the, the, um, the gate uh, is actuated by the photons. And therefore, this changes uh, at the frequency of the cavity, uh, dynamically, the population of the, uh, uh, of the dot. Is this the, the back action we are talking about? Uh, no, so I, I'm thinking about that n over there. Yeah. Uh, to calculate chi, you first calculate n, right? Yeah. Uh, and that n is, uh, I mean, technically is related to imaginary part of retarded Green's function yeah, yeah. of the dot. Yeah. Now that would have, in principle, some self-energy correction due to photons. Yeah, but this is this one here. Uh, this is a, this is captured by this term because this is linear response. Uh, you have to linear response. You assume that uh, essentially you can relate it to unperturbed uh, uh, quantities. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the 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 linear perturbation. That's exactly, that's, that's the sure thing, I mean, that this is why, when I write this, this is exactly what I'm doing. I'm writing the perturbation, this is, so I'm writing the perturbation, so what I assume here is only that it's adiabatic, but uh, you can have a, a non-adiabatic uh, linear response, uh, 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 let's say, um, uh, calculation, uh, and this is exactly what you say, but in a less formal uh, way, so uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 uh, this acts, uh, like at the frequency of the cavity of the mode, uh, and uh, on the um, essentially on the, on the um, average number of electrons on the dot, and uh, the way this guy back acts on the um, on the uh, 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 on the cavity is because you change the population dynamically, which changes also the frequency dynamically. But these two terms cancel out into a quasi-static term in a rotating frame, and this is why you have this g square chi. But then you can see the opposite also. That uh, so what what we so the next uh, near, uh, another uh, next order term would be that of course this guy can change also the conductance, like photon assisted tunneling processes. But this is a higher order process. Okay. That in calculating d dagger d average. You have not included the effect of the cavity, because if I didn't have cavity, my d dagger d would still be the same, yeah. right? Yeah. So this is linear response. So yeah, that's so. Point is that in the within this semi-classical approach, this linear response theory is valid. Yeah, exactly. And you don't have the effect of cavity in the Absolutely, population. Yeah, that's linear response. But you see that linear response. I mean, it's uh, so linear response experimentally. We can we can. Validated, okay, we can see that uh, if we put a large, I mean, we put large power in the, in the cavity, you change, of course, the signal which you see, and you, you, you see different physics. Uh, and so, um, 
and so you, if you if you go uh, to a very low uh, number of uh, of photons in a cavity, uh, then uh, then essentially at some point you will start to see all, all the time the same signal, and the same signal will be uh, essentially uh, uh, this uh, this uh, chi here. Okay. Okay. So uh, so now we uh, just for the last part, and then tomorrow we will we will see. Uh, uh, in more details, I mean the uh, the things. That, so um, so let's so we will write uh, essentially the similar um, and essentially I will write down a similar equation. So let me just see. Okay. So just to simplify things. Uh, so the double quantum dot uh, will be uh, will be so so something like that. Uh, so no, let's let's put it uh, the same. So you have epsilon left, then you have another barrier, epsilon right. And so now, um, um, so now this is a, there is a hopping term t here, and I will completely neglect, but I write them down: gamma left and gamma right. So um, in fact, uh, this these are uh, these I omit that uh, there are reservoirs here, uh, and I will. Um, um, so you will see in which sense I, I omit the reservoirs, uh, because I want only to uh, to see how now I can read out uh, uh, the internal transition uh, in this guy. So the internal transition in this guy is a, a transition, for example, where the photons uh, bring a, um, a dot. Um, an electron from the left dot to the right dot. Uh, this is that kind of transition which I want to uh, to address uh, uh, with the cavity. And uh, and so let me just see the. And so now uh, I do exactly the same thing as before, but I change uh, I change the Hamiltonian. So I have it like that. So the Hamiltonian is. Uh, uh, so this is. Uh, well, again, this is this this is again the, the kinetic part which I have uh, simplified like like before. So it's uh, uh, so epsilon delta uh, over two c dagger left c left minus c dagger right c right. So with uh, epsilon delta uh, being uh, the difference between the left and the right. So I assume that my my origin of energies is here. And then there is the hopping term here, uh, which I will take real just to, to make things simpler. That's the hopping term here. Okay, and you see that, and now experimentally I have a control knob uh, on epsilon delta, by, because I have gates. I have also a control knob uh, um, uh, on T in principle, uh, depending on the on the platform, and uh, sometimes also, and, and you have also a control knob on the gammas here. But we will assume that the gammas we can disregard them. And now uh, we will exactly write down a similar equation of motion. Uh, and uh, essentially, um, when we write down this equation of motion, so before doing that, it's useful uh, to do uh, to um, to to do a transformation of basis of this guy. So I put it like that. Um, so, so essentially I diagonalize the, it's gonna be something like this. So I write down the Hamiltonian in the bonding, anti-bonding um, um, basis. That's the bonding, anti-bonding basis. That's the bonding anti bonding basis, and then uh, this, uh, um, this is C plus. Um, so, with the C plus uh, dagger, is uh, cosine theta over 2, uh, C dagger plus sine theta over 2, uh, 
uh, C dagger right, and the, the C dagger minus is minus sine over two. And with theta is the arc tangent over two T over epsilon delta. And uh, okay, and now, uh, and now I, I kind of do exactly the same uh, thing as here. Uh, so, and then I get a slightly different, uh, um, a slightly different, uh, uh, let's say, um, um, uh, a slightly different form, because now I have also to transform uh, the coupling term. So that I remind the coupling term, uh, it was. Uh, was a bit different. So the coupling term is G left and left plus G right and right. And so, and so in fact, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, essentially, um, so we are, when I write it down, it's, uh, um, okay, it's, it's essentially, um, uh, GT here, so essentially I will write down. Um, uh, I will essentially already uh, uh, make uh, the connection uh, with the. Um, um, so no, no, I will not make the connection for the moment. So this I will write down essentially directly uh, in the. Um, uh, uh, I will write down directly in this basis. So uh, um, so now I I will have uh, so G left. Um, uh, so I do. I need to transfer it, it back, and so uh, it will be G left. So um, so um, uh, so it's C um, plus. Uh, uh, there is a cosine uh, uh, cosine um, theta over two C plus uh, uh, minus. Uh, uh, the sine uh, over two uh, uh, okay yeah uh, c minus uh, plus uh, times uh, uh, times the cosine. And plus uh, um, plus a G right here, so now it's going to be a sine over two uh, times uh, um, okay. And so what you see here. That you have you have many terms, but we you can already anticipate that uh, only the C plus C minus uh, uh, terms will uh, uh, will survive uh, because uh, because these ones uh, uh, will be essentially uh, completely gone, uh, but we can still uh, write them down. So they will be now uh, G left, uh, so it will be cosine squared uh, theta uh, C dagger. Uh, uh, Plus, uh, plus, uh, uh, so sine square c dagger minus c minus uh, plus uh, now uh, so this term which is minus sine theta over two cosine theta over two and now there will be two terms uh, they will be the c dagger minus uh, uh, c plus plus uh, um, C dagger plus C minus, and the same uh, holds for the, uh, the, the 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 other term here, uh, and which is essentially um, the sin sine squared. Now this is the uh, okay plus. So then the other is the other one, the cosine squared sine. And uh, uh, and then it says the opposite 
sine of theta, cosine of theta over Q. And uh, so now it's exactly the same uh, uh, term. So there is C dagger plus uh, C minus uh, plus uh, C dagger minus Q plus. And you arrive at the result, which is that, uh, okay, so this one will, will be slow. I mean, this one um, essentially uh, uh, will drop. Uh, And you're left with g left minus g right uh, sine theta over 2 cosine theta over 2 times the sum of the um, um, c dagger minus uh, c plus plus uh, um, c plus dagger c minus. And so you recover here that, uh, so what you see is that in fact these internal transitions uh, are only sensitive to the difference between the left and the right, uh, um, the left and the right uh, um, um, coupling, and this is somehow uh, what you would expect physically because uh, there is no way to excite electrons from the left to the right if you don't uh, shake asymmetrically the left and the right dot with the cavity, and of course uh, this process will be efficient. So this guy here now, uh, this is uh, this this sign here is just two t over the square root. Uh, of epsilon d, uh, epsilon delta squared plus 40 squared. And so of course now if the charge, uh, if now the, the two dots are far detuned, so epsilon d is very large, uh, then of course the, what, the charge is either on the left or to the right, and therefore also these processes are not efficient. So, so you recover these things, um, and now uh, we are ready to plug this in there. So, and then I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going faster. And so, and so this, this thing here, so I will, I will define it here. I call this is the transverse coupling term. Um, so I will, I will put it here. I call this GT times, uh, so um, 2T over So this is just this term, and in fact, instead of having uh, the G here, now we will have uh, uh, the GT. So we can do exactly the same thing as before. So now I, I just remove this thing here. And now instead of having the D dagger D, and now I, I have uh, exactly the same, uh, uh, the same thing, but, but I have here uh, C dagger, um, I have GT here. And if I do the same thing uh, like, uh, like before, I, have, uh, I, I write down an equation of motion for C dagger minus C plus. And the C dagger minus C plus, uh, um, this, is a kind of a, this is a sigma x here, essentially. Yeah. Right, this part what I will call a sigma x. And, uh, and essentially, I can write down now an equation of motion for C dagger minus C plus again. And when I write it down, essentially the same way, what I get uh, is now uh, minus uh, I omega double quantum dot, uh, so which is uh, 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 C uh, dagger minus C plus. And now I put it by hand, uh, but it doesn't matter the, uh, the, the relaxation. So I say this is one gamma two star, C dagger minus C plus, and there is a, uh, now, this is, again, this is this back action uh, which you were mentioning, which is just uh, um, now I, GT, so now there is uh, uh, the number, the occupation of the, um, of the bonding and anti-bonding, so it's plus times A here. So this, is, uh, this would be a sigma Z term here. Uh, and uh, if you combine these two things, uh, you get exactly a similar expression. But instead of having this, uh, um, you have uh, um, so, so you have similar. You do exactly the same. You do the rotating wave approximation. So you see that these two guys are not far away. So, so this in fact. Uh, uh, 
uh, now this is uh, the, the distance between the bounding and tie bounding state. So, and, and now uh, you do exactly the same job as before, and you end up with a cavity resonance frequency, which has this shape. So exactly the same, but, but this term is slightly different. Now there is a GT square, this is expected. And now uh, there is a, so it's, I always get, it's N minus. So, so it's N minus, minus N plus. So this is again in a semi-classical limit. Omega RF minus omega double quantum dot. So uh, plus I gamma two star. And, uh, and essentially, uh, and essentially uh, here, uh, you have the new, the new expression for, uh, for this ice over there. So you see here that it's pretty nonlinear, in fact, already, because uh, now this guy depends on the difference in the populations between the uh, bounding and anti-bounding state. Uh, which means that we can have some kind of complex uh, um, uh, dynamics. And this is already at this point, you already see uh, uh, the precursor of the, of the amazing and the lazing effects. Uh, because this guy now depends also, you can write down a similar equation, which depends also on the, on the equation of motion. I mean, of the, uh, you can write down the equation of motion. But for a moment, we, what we are going to say is that this is just, uh, uh, this is just one. So this is just the ground state. Uh, and, and uh, okay, and I'm, I'm almost done. And if you do, uh, you say this is just a ground state, that you see that you have new poles now in this guy, uh, because the new poles now, you see they come from this combination of, this, uh, of, these two, uh, um, of these two things, and essentially what you find is that uh, there will be new poles, uh, which you will recognize because you have already seen this in uh, by trying many talks, but also in the talk of Jason, is that now the new the new uh, poles uh, can occur. So for so if the if the gamma here and and this kappa is small enough, uh, so you will have essentially. Uh, so in uh, uh, so you will have essentially the. Um, so this is the. Uh, is this uh, it's half plus or minus so um, um, essentially the um, uh, the square root of of the difference now uh, plus uh, um, And so you see here that uh, with this uh, uh, simple, in a simple way, if uh, now the lambdas here are small enough, uh, and so small enough means that they are smaller than this GT here. So now if GT is larger, much larger than lambda naught and gamma two star, uh, you have two new poles, uh, which is, uh, so you have the, um, here the physics, so you recover the physics, uh, of uh, uh, vacuum rabbit splitting. So you have a splitting of the mode uh, from the interaction, uh, from the strong interaction of this mode uh, um, with the cavity. And whether it is uh, possible to observe this in quantum dots, uh, you have already an answer from uh, uh, Jason's uh, lecture, and I will show you further example tomorrow and how we can understand generically even when uh, these lambda knots and, and gamma two star, mostly gamma two star, are, are larger with respect to these energy scales, uh, and especially this G here, uh, how we can understand also quantitatively all the data, which you have seen already uh, uh, somehow in, uh, also in um, um, uh, this, uh, some curves uh, in, in the talk of Jason, how you can understand qualitatively this data with this kind of uh, 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 expressions. Okay, thank you for your attention.
Yeah, if you set them to zero, it will it completely cancel. So this is exactly what you see when when you set what we call is you saturate the transition. So now if you if you shine a large microwave power through the cavity and you equilibrate the two populations, what you see is uh, this is the first nonlinear effect which you see is that the response depends on the power. So you you equilibrate, you have a, a essentially equal, I mean a, um, a populations in N, in the bonding and anti-bonding state. And therefore, this one goes to zero. So this uh, this is, can be done experimentally. So I will show you example tomorrow of that. So that situation is as good as I don't have power. Yes, exactly. But it's it's just you know when you saturate the two level system, essentially you you completely lose. I mean uh, uh, the uh, uh, its uh, its response because you need to have an imbalance between the population between uh, the up and, and the down. Uh, uh, or the bonding and anti-bonding, or the up and down spin. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I have a question. So suppose you uh, you take that and then you calculate transmission as a function of detuning, yeah. then you would see uh, um, amplification just like uh, Jason has seen, right? Um, uh, let's say um, I. So in this regime um, where I don't come, where I don't have the other. I mean. Uh, no, in this framework, you can. Uh, it's uh, it's difficult to see. So, no, you see that you have some kind of um, uh, instability in the in the in the equations, uh, as far as I remember, which uh, signal the fact that you can have uh, amplification. But uh, but uh, because of this term here. But um, uh, but then, if you want to um, to study, I mean, uh, this uh, in more details, you you have to rely on uh, on more. Uh, let's say. Uh, Sophisticated approximation than the semi-classical, usually. Because I, I, I think you will see uh, like like a dip and then a dip at some negative detuning and then a bump at positive detuning. Um, even in this case, I. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I haven't to look extremely carefully to that, but I'm not sure. I think you really need to 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 go to the. Um, uh, so, for example, if I compare, I mean, so here really it's uh, it's. Uh, you know, this is um, uh, just um, a linear response theory, which you can push a bit further if you really want to do that kind of um, uh, uh, that kind of um, study, that kind of problem in a controlled fashion. I think you have to go to uh, to master equation and to treat properly all these uh, uh, these decoupling terms. So you see here, I decouple from uh, the a. If I write this in the chi times uh, a here, I, this means that I have already done the decoupling between. Uh, the dynamics of C dagger minus C plus and, and, the, and the photon, which is, of course, uh, at the core of what is happening when you have a. So you cannot do this decoupling it's like this. Uh, you see, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of a bit of a crude approximation to, to, to describe amplification or even uh, amazing. So you have to, to do something more sophisticated. So one way out, uh, it's uh, the so called semi quantum, I think, uh, approximation. But it's not, I mean, there, are, like, there is a whole wealth. I mean, I don't want to, I mean, uh, I don't even know, I mean, exactly. I mean, very well, this, uh, this physics, but it's, there is a whole wealth of, uh, of uh, theories uh, uh, in order to describe this, this in a more crucial way. So I, I just was meaning that here you already see that you will have some nonlinear phenomena occurring, but I don't. But it can only describe one small part of nonlinear phenomena which are occurring in these systems. And I don't. Th this is. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, you get the proper answer. You, you see some some instabilities here already. When you write down the couple of equations, but you don't get the, the, the right answer, which is observed experimentally.